Hello, it is Monday, March 29th, 2021? Yes, March 29th, that's the day. Uh, sorry, my, uh, I don't know, I'm just a little off today. Uh, anyway, uh, so, percentage guy in the chat, uh, talking about motivation. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, oh, hang on. Oh god, something's happening. Okay, Amber Alert, that's always fun. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, motivation is a serious problem. Yeah, for a lot of people, uh, I definitely know the issue, or I definitely know the know the feeling. Uh, can't tell how I can't tell you how many projects I've started that have never seen the light of day. Uh, it's very sad. Probably probably in the hundreds at this point. It's it's pretty crazy. Uh, wait, it's twenty ninth. Oh God, <laughs> in, yeah, uh, in a month. Wow, yeah, it really does. But yeah, today, yeah, today's the twenty ninth. I had to double check because. Uh, Oh, whoop, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Ooh. Yeah, apologies. Yeah, today is the 29th. Um, yeah, uh, today. Uh, so I did add a couple things to the stream. Um, I finally added a schedule, which I've been meaning to do for a very long time, just haven't done. Uh, but what I'm going to do uh, from now on is on at 11 a.m. it's going to be a sort of uh, more beginner focused stream where we just remake an existing game. Uh, the point of that is to just sort of, uh, you know, use some existing, some existing idea that everybody understands and just try to develop that and show how, how you would go about doing that. Uh, it's also for me to sort of focus on just trying to explain my thoughts a little bit better and just keep the logic as simple as possible. Uh, and then at, I think it's 3 p.m. Central, uh, that's U.S. Texas, uh, we're going to be working on more advanced stuff. So I'll be working on like game jam stuff. I also updated the panels and in the future I'll have some like branding stuff and actual artwork on the stream. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's been a little slow getting that up and running just because the way that Photoshop and uh, GIMP and all these things interact. But yeah, today, uh, as you might have guessed, we're going to be remaking Asteroids. A uh, very simple little game. Uh, but I have grabbed basically everything I think we need. I've managed to go and create everything we need. Uh, so I created simple little artwork for the ships. Uh, the Asteroids are just going to be uh, basic shapes. And yeah, I think everything, I think everything is there. Uh, we do have a font. Uh, I'm going to try to work with this. Uh, it's called Metal Lord. Uh, I like the name. Yeah, we're going to try to work with that in the Text Mesh Pro stuff. I'm not sure how it handles fonts. Uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, I don't have any music uh, yet, but I will add some. And if we get through all of this, then we'll work on adding the new uh, the newer Unity input system, like hooking this up to the newer Unity input system. But we're going to use the legacy one for now. So uh, in Asteroids, you basically have uh, your ship in the middle of the screen. Well, actually, not in the middle of the screen. Basically, anywhere on the screen. And if you move, hang on. Let me let me grab an actual ship. So you have. Oh, that is way too large. Um, right, because I haven't set these. Uh, is it ten twenty four five twelve? I think it's five twelve. Is what I want these at. What's up, percentage guy? Okay. So you have your ship, then you have these asteroids. Uh, let's say we have that, that is much too large. Uh, so let's say 512 is probably fine. Uh, that's for the hexagon, probably want the actual octagon. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's a bit too large. That might be actually the right size for the ship. It's just the asteroid needs to be a bit larger. Let's say about that size, yeah. So you have the asteroids, and you know they fly across the screen. You know you turn to shoot them. Uh, I came here thinking I could use mull as some word, uh, some rum, some word from the German language, because mull is German from my group, but turns out is actually a word in the English language. Oh yeah, to like um, to like mull over something is to like you know, think about it in sort of a depressive way. Uh, or it's to think about something kind of excessively. But yeah, that we use we use a similar word. It's not it doesn't have the accents. But yeah, it's a similar word. 
Yeah, so you you know shoot the asteroids and then they explode and break apart into um, other asteroids. So you know they'll break apart into two smaller asteroids, and then those will fly off in you know different directions or something. So that's kind of what we're going to try to make. Uh, we can delete these. <clears throat> oh yeah, and also if you go off the edge of the screen, you obviously warp back around to the other edge of the screen, which I think. Damn it! I need to. <laughs> Now I need a new word. <laughs> um, trying to think of another. I don't. I don't know what words don't exist in the English language. Um, you know, that's a good question. What words don't exist in the English language? Probably are missing quite a few. Make a game in Java. I dare you. So actually, it's kind of interesting, uh, percentage guy. Um. I wrote a Java program yesterday that is actually very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to do a YouTube video on it. What it is, I don't know, have you ever heard of the coding exercise called FizzBuzz? Yeah, that's, that's what it was. It was actually an interesting version of that. Um, yeah, tell me if you've ever heard of that uh, coding exercise. Anyway, to move the player around, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a, a player controller script, and we're actually going to also want, um, or actually, let me create the player controller script, and then I'll, I'll describe some things. Uh, I need Unity to actually cooperate. So we're going to say player controller component. All right. Uh, so let me... Whenever I open, whenever this opens up, I'll describe this buzz, and then we'll go on to the actual Unity development. Um, so let's get rid of this. <clears throat> so FizzBuzz. Uh, FizzBuzz, It's actually kind of simple. Uh, all it is is it's supposedly a drinking game, but it's not really. Uh, but it's called Fizz uh, Buzz. So the idea is that you print out all the numbers between one and a hundred. So you say one, two, three, four, five you know, six, seven, etc. But any number that's divisible by three, you have to replace with the word fizz, and any number div divisible by five, you have to replace with buzz. So the output would look like this. And then, you know, you get down to 14 and then 15, since it's divisible by both three and five, you print out fizz buzz. And so this is the, this is what you do. This is it's a very common, like, coding interview question. And it's a very simple program. It's like five or six lines. Um, but I managed to write the whole thing uh, using no if statements, uh, there was no um, no mathematics. No, there's no uh, mathematics, so we don't use any plus minus. You know, there's no plus minus uh, modulus division, uh, etc. And then also no semicolons. So yeah, I managed to write it in Java with all of that. Uh, so I was very impressed with myself that I managed to do that. <laughs> uh, it took me about two hours to figure out how to do it, but it was pretty funny. Uh, and it all came from, like, uh, there was a YouTube video where someone showed that you could print Hello World in Java without writing any semicolons. So I was like, I wonder how far you can take that. And it turns out you can take it pretty far with FizzBuzz. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so... <laughs> and then how do you write Java with semicolons? Yeah, it's pretty. There's a pretty funny little hack you can use to do it. Uh, so to be clear, um, I was ignoring the import statements, but yeah, you can you can actually do it. There's actually a little trick you can use. I don't know if it works in C sharp though. Um, but actually, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a YouTube video on exactly how it works. Um, but think about the if statements one too. Like, how would you write? How would you write um, mathematical comparisons without you know mathematics at all or if statements? You can also look at the video. Like, you can look up the video on how to print without um, writing any semicolons. But yeah, um, I'm gonna make a YouTube video on how it works and everything because it's really funny. But yeah, you can. I'm actually wondering if you can write a game in Unity without semicolons, because I think you can. Um, you just have to ignore the Unity engine imports in x86 assembly. 
Um, in x86 assembly, is there is there really a print operation though? That's sort of the issue. I don't know if there is. Um, I mean, if there was a print operation, like I've written assembly, like I know how to. Actually, wait a minute. Does no, it doesn't have an ASM directive. Uh, actually, wait a minute. Can you? I forgot. Can you do that in C sharp? Is that a thing? No. Um. Oh, I don't remember if you can do that in C sharp. I don't think you can. Um, I know in C you can. You can just do ASM. But yeah, I've written assembly before. Um, I don't know how. I don't know how hard that would be. I'd have to think about that. I mean, that can't be that hard. You'd just have to know. Yeah, it couldn't be that hard. I'd have to figure it out. I mean, I could probably do that one day. Uh, yeah, I could probably figure that out. Let's <clears throat> write it in binary. But okay, what what inter well what interpreter like what in binary? You'd have to know like what like it's not any different. It's not really any different than writing it in assembly, um, because binary works the same way in general. It's just assembly is just a nicer way of writing binary, really. Uh, but anyway, so for asteroids, <laughs> for asteroids, what we're going to need is we're going to need a rigid body, and that's how we're going to move the player, because um, that interacts with the Unity physics engine. Uh, whoops, this is going to be a rigid body 2D. Rigid body 2D. We will add a little bit of linear drag, maybe 0.1, and a little bit of and no angular drag. Angular drag will be um, when we turn, and linear drag will be whenever we move. So we do want to slow down a little bit, <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, oh god, go away, geekdom, I don't care. But yeah, uh, so we will slow down a little bit when we move, but what we want to do is we want to reference that in our script. So we're going to say protected. Uh, rigid body 2D, and we'll call this the rigid body. And so that this is visible in the Unity inspector, so right now if I go over here and we add a player controller, knew how to read and write ASCII characters. Yeah, I mean, it's basically. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, binary and most high-level languages are actually very similar. It's just you have to know what the actual, you know, ones and zeros uh, point to. But once you know that, like, you know, some number of uh, zeros and ones is equal to a method, it works the same way. Like, it has arguments and everything like that. Although I think they're fixed length and various things like that, but, you know, you can deal with it. So right now with the player controller component, we have the rigid body, but we don't actually have it assigned. So there's a couple ways we can deal with that. Uh, one of them, actually I'll deal with it the other way, uh, because I always do it the first way. So we'll say private void awake, and then what we'll say is that the rigid body is equal to, and then we'll just say get component, and then we'll say rigid body 2D. And so what this will do is this will cause Unity to search the game object that this player controller is on, I grab the rigid body and then it will assign it here. And so in the private avoid update, uh, there's no way that we can see. No, the, there's no way that we can see that this works. Well, actually, that's not true. We can. So actually, what we can do? I'll comment this out. And then let me uh, start this up. I believe in debug we can see it. Yes, yeah, so we can see the rigid body here. First item in the hardware section. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay, so some interesting things happened there. Uh, first one. That's very interesting, don't bully. Yeah, so some interesting things happened. First off, the player actually fell. This is a really good and expensive component. <laughs> is that a customer review? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, as you can see, the player actually fell, and there's no rigid body assigned here. Uh, the reason the player fell is because we're using gravity, uh, which I cannot find. Interesting, I didn't know that, that changed here. Uh, we have simulated, but we want simulated. Oh, right, gravity scale. In, in 2D, it's gravity scale, so we're going to set that to zero. Uh, and then here, what we will do is we'll change this 
So now when we run it, A, the player won't fall because we set the gravity scale to zero. First item in About Me was literally Eternity. Uh, I'm not sure... Oh, I found a streamer yesterday. Okay. In his hardware section was Don't Bully. Oh, wow. <laughs> about Me was literally Eternity. Very interesting. Imagine the teacher asked, uh, how about you introduce yourself and you just go, I am Eternity. I am forever. I am everything. I am nothing. I am on psychedelics. Anyway, uh, so we can see here that A, the player is a little bit weird, and also um, we can see the rigid body got assigned here. That's what we wanted. So it just shows us that this is working. Uh, so in order to move the player, uh, what we can do is there's two ways to move in Unity, or well, multiple ways actually. But one way is if we go into, I believe it's project settings, and we check out the input manager. It has these axes, um, has this axes array here. So there's horizontal and vertical. So you can see that the horizontal axis is mapped to the A and B keys by default, and also the left and right keys by default. And the vertical one is multiple mapped to W and S. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to get uh, the, if we get the W and S, or sorry, if we get the horizontal axis, it'll return a number between minus one and one. Trying to find a new word. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know you could do the, the different colored text. Hmm. How do you actually do that in Twitch? That's interesting. Uh, so if, if we want to, or sorry, if we're getting the horizontal axis, that's across the uh, x-axis, so the red axis here, and what that will do is that will be, if we press the A key, we'll get a minus one. Ah, uh, okay. And if we press the B key, we'll get a positive one. So what we want to do is we want to rotate. Uh, let me just hide the camera. So we have a positive one. We want to rotate in the positive direction. Uh, oops. Sorry, if we have a positive one, we want to rotate the player around the z-axis, right? So we want to rotate this way. If we get a negative one, we want to rotate this way. So that's not super hard to do. And if we get a positive one on the vertical axis, that would be moving up. So we want to move whatever the local forward is. So all of those things are pretty easy to do. So we can say um, float. Uh, input vertical. Actually, no, uh, what we'll do, yeah, let's say float uh, input uh, vertical. This will be input.getAxis. We'll say vertical, so this is uh, moving up and down. So what we want to say is we want to say, uh, we want to set the velocity of the rigid body to be forward times whatever this uh, input is. So we'll say uh, rigid body dot velocity is equal to, actually, uh, Endwick might work. Taken from the German Endwicker, meaning developer. Interesting. Yeah, that might work. Endwick. Interesting. Uh, so we want to calculate, or actually we want the, we want to have a speed for the player that we can set. So we have a protected float, which will be the speed, and to show this in the Unity Inspector, we'll actually add this serialized field, so this will tell Unity to just uh, serialize this out, and we will actually uh, add 1.0 as the default. So what we'll say is that the rigid body dot velocity is equal to the transform dot forward, which is, in this case, the transform dot forward. So if we rotate this way, it's the direction of this, uh, whoops, I seem to switch local. It's the direction of this yellow arrow, that's the forward. So if we you know, rotate down, the forward becomes down, so we'll move that way. Uh, and you can change uh, which, you can change uh, seeing that by uh, modifying this up here. So this is the local, uh, local transform, and this is the global. So it's still the global Y is up here, but the local Y is going that way. And so that'll just make the player move forward depending on the rotation. So say forward uh, times uh, speed. 
Uh, and I don't know if we actually want this. I think we might actually want add force. But we'll do this for now and just set the velocity to that. Actually, no, we don't because, well, no, actually. Let's get this part working first, then we'll, then we'll mess with it. So say float uh, input horizontal. Or actually, let me just show off that this works. Let's see what happens. Okay. So if I just do this and we press up, uh, nothing happens. Why is that? Hmm, interesting. Why is that the case that nothing is happening? Huh. So rigidbody.velocity is equal to transform.forward times speed. But speed should be more than one. Hmm. Ah, times input vertical. Oh, it's not transform.forward, uh, it's transform.up. I'm wrong. So uh, I forgot that Unity. Although everything looks 2D in Unity, it's or in the 2D mode of Unity, it's actually not. Uh, Unity, everything is 3D. Uh, so forward is actually the blue axis here. So it messes with the Z value. So if you look at this, uh, whenever we uh, press the two, or whenever we press one of these, uh, it should be changing the Z value, but it's not doing that either. That's very interesting. I am failing to understand why that's not working. Uh, actually, no, I really don't get that. Let's say transform.up. Hmm. Times speed times input vertical. That should work. Hmm. Uh, so that's why multi dimensional games work. In Unity, everything's 3D. Yeah, in Unity, um, 2D. In Unity 2D, like the Unity 2D stuff is just a hack um, built on top of the engine. And I mean, even even the UI is built that way in Unity. It's just a hack that's built on top of the actual 3D, you know, 3D model, or 3D, 3D space. Uh, it's kind of lame, but it works. And so yeah, so now our little ship moves forward, but it can't turn. So that's fine. It is very interesting how this is working out. Uh, so if we set this to three, yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, we get some stuff. Okay, let's work on making this thing actually turn. So we float input uh, horizontal. Horizontal. And this will be input dot get axis, and this will be horizontal. So what we want to do is we want to rotate um, based on the horizontal input. So we would say transform dot rotation. That's what we're going to assign is equal to, or no, we can say times equal because you can rotate quaternions in Unity by multiplying them by other quaternions. So for instance, transform dot uh, rotation is a quaternion here. So if we say quaternion dot Euler which is the Euler angles, which is, because quaternions are four-dimensional objects. They're very interesting. They are like, it's like a four-dimensional sphere projected into three-dimensional space. But our human brains are much, much more equipped to handle three-dimensional rotation. Uh, and in this case, it's actually very easy. So the first, the x and the y axis can be zeroed out. Back to the quaternion, it's a very crazy thing. <clears throat> Like I said, it's basically it's basically a four-dimensional sphere projected into a three-dimensional plane, and so it makes it just exceptionally weird for the human mind to deal with. Uh, but if you go into it, it has four components instead of three, so it has an x, y, z, and a w, and these do not correspond to the x and y x, y, and z axes like you would think. I think they they're between zero. I want to say that they're all between zero and one. And then they get multiplied by, I think, E or something. They're very weird, but uh, it's just easier to deal with them <clears throat> when you think exception. Um, I think throws. It's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think exception. Uh, it's crazy how that word is uh, linked in my mind for that. Uh, anyway. We want to rotate, so what we want to do 
is we want to take an Euler, um, basically the Euler angles of 0, 0, and then the z-axis, which is what we want to rotate around. We want to rotate around that by some speed, and then also by uh, time dot delta time. So what we will do is we will say uh, protected float uh, rotation speed. And then I think this needs to be something fairly large. I think 35 is fine. We can always change it later, and we'll serialize it so that we can edit it later. And so we'll say this is the rotation speed, and we'll say times time dot delta time. So this will rotate, uh, whenever you multiply by time dot delta time, it's uh, x per second. So this is like, this is 35 degrees a second. And actually, we probably want 90 degrees a second. Well, actually, no, we, want, we probably want 180 degrees a second. Because this will mean that it takes us 100, and it'll take us two seconds exactly to rotate all the way around. Fun fact, if you reverse the word, you get, uh, which means nothing. Okay. <laughs> well, that's an interesting point. Um, have you ever heard? Um, there's a, so there's a process you can go through. Uh, give me a second to fix my camera. It's annoying me. Wait, did it stop doing the thing? Yeah, there we go. So there's a process. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but if you take any word, um, you can reduce it to four. So for instance, let's take the word speed. Uh, speed has five letters, and so five has four letters, at which point you get uh, four, which also has four letters. And I think this happens with any word. So if you translate it to a number, and then you translate the number to a word, uh, you'll always get down to four. <laughs> it's really funny. So for instance, like the word uh, private has seven. So private. Uh, which has seven letters, I think. Yeah, seven letters. So you get seven, which becomes five, and then you get five, which becomes four, right? So I think it's true with I think it's true with any word. Um, it doesn't matter how long it is either. It's kind of funny. But yeah, try it with a couple. And I think they're all stable at four. Because like even things that have two letters, it's like the word two, it would go to two, which would be two, which is three, and then three, yeah, and then three, which has five letters, and then five all the way down to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really funny, isn't it? But yeah, I think it doesn't matter how long the word actually is, because it'll always reduce to four. I don't know if that's entirely true though. I've never tried. I've never tried it with a bunch of different words, but it does seem. It seems like if you follow that pattern to its extreme. Uh huh. How many letters are in that? Uh, so how many letters are in that? If you tell me how many letters are in that, I can reduce it. <clears throat> yeah. So we should be rotating at ninety degrees a second now. Uh, times input horizontal, right? About 60. I mean, that's really easy, right? Uh, so let's assume 60. Okay. So that's the word. Uh, let's assume 62. So you say 62. Uh, so that has what? 1, 2, 3, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8? No. Yes, 8. So that has 8 letters. Uh, so 8, which has 5, which 5 already reduces to 6. That word is the second longest. Yeah, I know. German German has that cool thing where they just like stick words onto each other and just make longer words. I wish, I wish English did stuff like that because we have, we have a lot of concepts that just take like 10 words to explain and it's like, could we just come up with one word for this? Yeah, so if I did this right, uh, yeah, okay. We're turning the wrong way, but we're still turning. Uh, so you can see that we uh, turn and then we can move forward. I mean, it has some cool stuff. Like I think that the, I think that sticking words onto each other is like actually a, I don't know, I think it's a good way of dealing with the problem of just not having enough words. 
Uh, but yeah, English, we like, we steal words from other languages. We do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, now, can move a little bit. Awesome. Ooh. Just me, you don't want to learn German. I've tried to learn a little bit of German, um, just because my my family, like, our ancestors are German. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that it has, like, the conjugation stuff, and English doesn't really have that. I mean, English... I don't know. English is weird because um, it's it's got a lot of words that don't make any sense. So, for instance, the word baloney. Um, trying to spell the word baloney is near... Like, if you just hear it, it's nearly impossible to spell. Um, I don't... I don't know. If you've never seen the spelling, like, you could never spell it. But it just it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but... So, have you learned English? Because I hate German. Hmm. I was actually watching um, a linguist, and she she like knew a bunch of different languages, like a bunch of uh, Indian languages as well. And uh, she hated English. She said that it's a very she said it's a very like centric, like egocentric kind of language because the word "I" is so common, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if it's like I don't know enough about other languages to know how common it is in other languages. But I always thought it was amusing that she didn't like it. So what if we do rigid body dot? What if we add force? What'll happen? I'm kind of curious. And also, is there a way? I think there is a way to set a velocity cap. So we can add a force, and then what we can do is we can say uh, rigid body dot velocity equals. Um, but in German, a word's gender can randomly change. Yeah. That's, it can randomly change? What do you mean randomly change? So we can say rigidbody.velocity equals rigidbody.velocity.normalized uh, uh, times mathf.max between the rigidbody.velocity.magnitude uh, and uh, let's set a max velocity here. Max velocity. Ah, what on earth? Uh, max velocity. Let's say that maybe that's three. And we'll call this um, acceleration. The only language that has. Uh, <laughs> uh, means the school in this case is female. Uh, interesting. Uh, is, uh, huh. Mm, is it because, well, I know that there are some, aren't there some languages where the singular version of the word is female, but the plural version or the, like, hmm. I thought there were languages where if you were referring to only a group of like females, it turns into it's a female word, and then the singular is female, but if you're referring to like a mixed group, then it becomes masculine. I thought that was a thing in some languages, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not maybe it's not. But I don't know enough. Like the word um like Latino, right? Like you have uh like, like the word Latino would be masculine, or I think you could say Latina, which is female. But then if you have both men, if you have a group of women, it's Latinas. And if you had a group of both, I think it's all, I think it's Latinos. I think it changes its gender based on, based on that, based on what you're referring to. Uh, the first... One of the first questions is you get, how do you say Nutella? <laughs> also, there's a common debate over whether it's uh, any of those. Like, you introduce yourself in the first question you get. <laughs> uh, well, in uh, English, um, the word nuclear, there's a debate over whether um, the word nuclear 
Um, people, some people say it as nuclear, like that's the actual pronunciation, but other people, you hear them say it as nuclear and people, there are people who say that and it's very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's like the GIF and JIF debate. Uh, it's very, there's just certain weird, weird words in every language, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> GIF and JIF. Yeah. Or um, uh, gib and jib, uh, as far as like whenever something, whenever um, say gif, I always say gif just because that's how I learned it. But I don't know. Like whenever my theory on language is that the purpose of like whenever whenever there's like differences in opinion like that, all I do whenever I'm talking to a person, what I will do is I'll just say the word that they say. Like, my opinion on language is that the purpose of speaking is to be understood, not to be right. So that's that's always been my philosophy. Also, that's very interesting, why it lets us do this. Uh, but anyway, uh, what this does. So we add force every frame. Uh, you'd think it's a GIF because that's how you say it in German. <laughs> Uh, let's be a rebel. Uh, so anyway, we add force, and then what we do is this limits the velocity. So what we do is we'll get the normalized version of our current velocity, and that will set the magnitude to 1. Uh, and so what we do is we uh, multiply it, and we take this with the magnitude of 1, then we multiply it by the max of the max velocity or the current magnitude, so if the current magnitude is two, we'll have a normal. We'll have uh, normalized, which is times two, and then otherwise, if this is higher than the current magnitude, we will, or sorry, if the magnitude is higher than the max velocity, we'll use the max velocity. So this will put a cap on how fast we can go, but I think we'll reach the cap like immediately. So let's see. I was today years old when I found out GIF is a picture format. I thought it was a video format or its own format. Well, I mean, it's a it's a type of like I'm trying to think of how to describe what it is. It's a way of like encoding um, videos in in images, basically. I mean, I guess it's technically an image format, but it's an image format that the browser knows how to play that looks like a video. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's weird what a GIF actually is. It's like the in-between between a video and a um, and an image. But I mean, I guess technically it would be an image because... I slick movement has joined the chat, yeah, basically. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of in between because um, so time dot delta time. Let's see what happens here. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of in between because I guess a video technically would have sound, but a GIF I don't think can. Yeah, it's it's kind of going for ice like movement. The problem is is that it's moving too fast. So let me set the acceleration to say point one. Yeah, I mean that's how that's what kind of movement asteroids had is that it had sort of. Ooh, wow, that doesn't work at all. Uh, why doesn't that work at all? Even is delta time. Yeah, it's the time between uh, the current frame and last frame. Hmm. Why is this not working? That's very interesting. Uh, max. I can't have a negative velocity. Uh, reach body dot velocity dot normalized. Transform dot up times acceleration times starting about the time. Hmm. Very interested. Ah, uh, that's little ms counter. Uh, that's the little ms counter. On some. It's. Yeah, it's a little MS counter basically. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, it's it's just because the time between two frames could vary. You don't actually know. So that's why 
I'm curious why this doesn't work. That's very interesting. Why why does that not work? Uh oh, let's see. Yeah, huh, that's very weird. Alright, so we go up. I am curious why we can't slow down. Uh, it's the max. Ah, it's the max. It's the min that we want. We want the smaller one. That's that's what we want. That's the problem, is that it was accelerating right up to the max. And then, yeah, okay, my logic was backwards, so yeah. Um, now we're not moving at all. Okay. Interesting. All right. Is it because the, it hasn't been determined yet? Is that what it is? I think it's because it hasn't been determined yet. So I think we need to do this. Is that right? Because at that point, the velocity will get set, and then it'll get capped afterwards. No? Hmm. Oh, no, there we go. It's moving a little bit. <laughs> the next message. Hmm. Okay, let's try this. Is eating pizza. Oh, uh, yeah. Pizza would be nice, but. Hmm. Yeah, pizza would be nice. I don't have any, though. I had pizza yesterday. So that is working. It's just very, very slow. Uh, so let's say 50 and 50. I think we can change the force mode as well. Yeah, if we multiply this by a factor of 10, now we get some movement. Okay. Yeah, now we get some kind of more asteroids-like movement. Yeah, sometimes you just got to play with the physics to actually make it do what you want. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right. So I think what we can do is we can add, we can change this. And then since we're adding the force mode, uh, I think we can change this to uh, force 2 dmodeimpulse impulse because <clears throat> I think this defaults to force, right? Let me double check. Yeah, it, uh, it defaults to force. And I'm not entirely sure what the difference is, but technically this would be an impulse engine, so the impulse probably works. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that's a little bit too good, actually. That's way too easy to control. I don't like that. Hmm. Maybe we make it so that you can only turn and so that you can either move or turn. You can't do both. That might work. Really love how Unity handles its variables. You can stop the game, change them, and then start the game. Other things. Uh, Java, it's a pain in the ass. Well, it depends. Uh, so it depends on the actual... It depends on the compiler. Or not the compiler, uh, it depends on the JVM. There are some JVMs that can do it. The, the function that you're looking for is called hot swapping. Uh, well, actually, no, that's, that's a different function. But yeah, in Java, you can, you can pause and change variables in the JVM. That's the thing you can do. It just depends on your JVM. Or your, not your JVM, but your, uh, your compiler, or uh, your tools. E Eclipse, you should be able to do it. Uh, I'm just not sure how. Yeah, I think there's Eclipse plugins to let you do it, if I recall correctly. But yeah, Unity is really nice the way that it works. Hmm. I can't decide if I like this or not. All right, I'll see you, percentage guy. Have a good one. I can't decide if I like this or the other thing. Hmm. Actually, what we'll do, this will make it hard. We'll basically say that you can either so that you can either turn or you can uh, move forward, but you can't do both. So let's say um, if uh, input vertical uh, greater than, eh, let's, let's say mathf dot uh, absolute value. Let's just double check, you know. 
uh, we'll say if the absolute value is greater than, let's say 0 0.001, 0.1f, basically, um, so if the player is moving forward, oh, wow, that was, <laughs> okay. Uh, basically what we'll say is if the player is, welcome back, it's uh, good to see you. We'll, um, we'll check if the player is holding the vertical axis. Just realized I type, ah, I see. It's... So if the player is holding um, the input or the forward, they can't actually steer. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. The player, if they're holding forward, they can't actually steer anymore. So you do have to pick a direction to go, otherwise it would be too easy. Yeah, I like that. All right. Yeah, I like that kind of movement. All right, that's fun. Do do do. All right, let's make the background a little bit darker because uh, it's kind of an asteroid sort of thing, right? Have a darker. Really, it should be like that. That kind of color, maybe darker blue-ish. Something like that. White triangle ghost. <laughs> Spin, yeah. All right, that's a little bit closer to an asteroid sort of background. All right. Let's see what it looks like in Maximize, because I think we need to make it smaller. Yeah, the player's a bit large, so let's make that a little bit smaller. Uh, and let's add a create empty parent here. Or actually, no, let's duplicate this. But this is the child. This will be the graphics. And then what we can do is we can remove the sprite renderer from this. And from here, we'll rem remove the rich body. Should give the game some pixelated effect. You know, the scan lines from the old vibe. <laughs> yeah, I probably should. That would be kind of cool. <clears throat> I think that would require like a shader though, so we'll probably have to do that a bit later. I'm not sure how, I'm not entirely sure how that would work with a shader, but oh god. But yeah, I think you could, I think you could do that with a shader. I just have to find one. Yeah, I like that. All right. Okay, it's a little bit, I want this to be kind of like that, maybe a little bit like that. Okay, so the next thing that we should probably do, well actually no, I was going to make the ship a little bit smaller. Right, probably like half the size, right? Because now when we maximize it, oh, that's a little bit too tiny. 75.75, whoops. Uh, control C, uh, Control V, and Control V. Or just make the game low res <clears throat> and scaled up. Pixelated shader, ordered on wish. Yeah, that's true. I've seen games do that where they just lower. I mean, you could just lower. I think you can lower the camera resolution, can't you? I thought that was a thing. Um, I thought you could lower the resolution of the camera. Am I just wrong on that? Uh, so I guess you could have a render texture, like a target render texture, and then you could render, like you could create, let me, let me actually try that really quick. I think you can do that. Uh, so let's assume that this is the canvas, right? Uh, and then let's scale this with screen size, uh, 1920 by 1080. Yeah, I think I can actually do this this way. Uh, so what I would do is I'd say a UI, I have a panel that just covers the whole thing. And then I think we can create just a render texture here, right? Uh, oh god, where is it? It's not a material, it's... I always forget how to do this. A render texture, there it is. Yeah, so if we set this to like, uh, what's a 916 resolution? Uh, nine, uh, or sixteen nine, I mean. Like, what's a super low one? 
uh, let's say, let's say we set it to 640 by 360. Uh, so 640, uh, 640 by uh, 360. Uh, go 4, 3. Uh, so actually I could. So I could do this. What is it? Uh, uh, God, is it 600 by 400? That's not a 4, 3. No, it's, uh, God, what is it? Is it 400 by 300? Yeah, that would be a 6, 3. Duh. Um, so okay, we can do that. Uh, let's see. How would I do this? I think I'd do it this way. No, it needs to... No, wait, this is fine. Hey, one shot, how's it going? Are you still... Or how was, how was the vacation in Vegas? Uh, how do I make this... Uh, Alright, let's say 800 by 600. I think you can double these, right? I think that's how that works. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. But anyway, I think we just set the render texture. Oh, can we not do that? Um, I thought you could output... Or does it have to go through a material first? Is that what it is? You might have to go through a material first. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, render material. Material. Uh, things is fun. My brother doesn't want to do anything. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, you're still in Vegas, I guess. Okay. Uh, oh, God, what is it? Yeah, okay, so we set that into... It's not opaque. It's... Uh, we don't want a standard. We want... Oh, God, what is it? It's unlit. No, it's a GUI shader. That's what we want. It's GUI shader. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, it's an unlit shader. Unlit color, no, unlit, no, it's a UI shader, that's what it is. UI unlit um, detail. And then I think we set this somewhere into here like that. And then I think you can set this into here. And I believe that will render over everything if I know what this does. Is that right? Uh, that's not rendering over everything. Why is that doing nothing? Um, oh God, what is it? I'm trying to think of how to do this. I've done this before. Like, this is how you do... There's a way that you can do this, where you do, like, a mini-map or something. So, okay, do we actually need the background? I don't see why we would need that. And also, I don't see why this has its own color like that. Yeah, there's a weird way to do this, where you can render it... Hmm. Oh, I'm not setting it as the target render texture. That's the problem. Right. There we go. Oh, no camera is rendering to this display. Interesting. We need a pixelated shader. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, if I knew how to do it, it would be easier. Uh, but apparently this camera doesn't render. So I would need to actually grab another camera and then not have it render to a render texture. This is the um, pix uh, this is the uh, camera. And then this is the actual main camera. And so this one can be untagged. Something like this. Really? That still doesn't work. That's very interesting. So this camera can display that. Uh, if I knew how to do it, it would be easier. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. If I knew how to do it, it would be easier. Uh, let's not... Actually, no, let's not render that. Maybe it's rendering... Maybe it's not ignoring the UI. I think you ignore the UI now, right? It's interesting that both of those appear to be ignoring the UI, although I don't think they actually are. If we turn you off and turn you on, let's look at this one. What happens? So that one renders the UI. 
This one renders the UI. This one, I don't want rendering the actual UI. Clear flags. So yeah, this clears to a solid color. That should call that. That shouldn't render the UI. Hmm. Oh my god, I don't remember how to do this. One of these is this audio listener needs to go. So okay, is that at least rendering to that texture? Let's check that. Um, let me undo this. Okay, it's turned into something interesting. So the render texture, oddly enough, is actually working. Um, let me check the actual, actual ship. So where is the ship? There it is. So yeah, the render texture itself is actually working. The render material, on the other hand, that references, references that render texture. So maybe it's not UI detail. Maybe it's just UI default. And then we add this to be the sprite texture. Uh, you can right click on the game to unfull screen it. Oh, right, I can. Let me try that. Okay, right click on game. Oh, so you, so you can. Okay, I didn't know that. That's cool to know. Good. Thank you. Um, so I don't know what the actual shader is for this. That's the problem. So that is unlit detail. And then that's the main color. But that's not what I want. I want the RGB. So the detail strength is one. Like that. No. Err. Why does that not work? I thought for sure it was possible to set like a sprite renderer. This has got to be how you do this. So this is from the render material. This is simple. Ah, no. UI UI detail. This is from the render material. So this should. Or is there, there's a render texture, but this should, ah, is it, no, okay. Er, anti-aliasing, color format, all right, fine, I'll look it up. I'll always look it up. Uh, Unity, instead of UI, make a camera render a square with the material. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Will that just work? That might, you might be, I think you're right. That probably will just work a lot easier. Let's, let's try that. Um, deactivate you. So we have that. Uh, I mean, performance isn't really really an issue. Oh yeah, you're right. It actually shouldn't affect performance. It should actually be more performant because, yeah, I just make a square. I'm make a quad. So can I just directly do that? Now you've set the render texture. Okay, there we go. That will probably actually work. So let's say 9.16. Um, Not 1.67. 9.16. Or no, uh, 3.4. Wait, no, 4.3. 4, 3. 4, 3. Yes, as such. All right, let's say you. Uh, we can just have you. It's not ortho size. Oh, you're not. No, you are orthographic. Interesting is that this is not this is not showing me the orthographic size of this. Uh, so let's set you to zero. Okay, so it is sort of rendering, uh, but what we need to do is we need to put one of these. Let's have you be on the um, pixelated layer. Pixelated layer. And you can clear everything that isn't. I don't want you rendering that. I just want you rendering everything that's not that. And I want you only rendering that. Uh, what layer? I think what it is. Hmm. Uh, 
Why is layer 3 just there? I think it used to be a reserved unity layer, and then it's not anymore. Uh, I can't remember how to make a camera render only one thing. I don't know why I can't remember how to do that. But there's definitely a way to make it render... So I clear everything. That clears that. I just don't want it. Yeah, I think it. Well, I think it used to be used for something. Like Unity used to use it for something, but I don't. I don't remember what it used to use it for. Um, oh my god, why is this so difficult? Um, so you're not rendering anything now. So actually, okay, let me hide this. Let me deactivate you. Will you render to a render texture? Actually, that's fine. So let me deactivate you. So you now render the ship. Uh, how to make the most useful cam ever. Calling mask nothing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not, is it just that it doesn't render that? Or is it? does it just render... Because it should be rendering you. Ah, it would render you if you were on the right layer. That was the problem. Okay. So now we can activate you, and then the only thing you render is that. You have culling mask everything. Actually, no. You don't render the pixelated stuff. So now you should get... Yeah, okay, so that's pixelated now. So now all we need to do is we say, I guess, 16 by 9. To make that thing, let's make it massive. And then we get the worst possible pixelation ever, but it does work. <laughs> um, all right, we can fix this as this was four by three. So given that, I don't know why that's not showing in the Unity. Oh, it's not showing because I've hidden it. That's why. All right. So there's that. And I think if we just increase the size of this like that, roughly. Uh, and we can remove you. Uh, the render texture, that's fine. Where did this material go? This is the new render texture. Uh, we don't want you having a standard shader. Uh, well, actually, so you set that as the albedo. OK, that's fine. Uh, so we can do a an unlit texture. And now I think that'll work. Yep, the worst possible solution ever. But it absolutely does work. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's awesome. In the worst possible way. So yeah, that, that one 100% works. Oh, this is the kind of solution that I would propose at like, my previous sort of job, is that I would... Uh, stuff be like yeah you know we could make it do this then everybody would uh band together and say let's not uh, yeah that's really cool i like that uh i think we can get rid of the anti-aliasing as well uh but not from here so this is the uh render material because i think the the camera itself now it doesn't only look old. It looks like you're streaming a bit right <laughs> Yeah, I think it does. Probably looks terrible. I wonder what the Metal uh, Lord font looks like in that, in that very old sort of style. This is the render texture. Texture. Uh, so let's see. Filter mode. Let's just do point filtering. And... Let's not do... So no anti-aliasing. Yep, that's fine. So now we get really chunky pixels. Yeah, look at that. No anti-aliasing. That looks absolutely ancient. <laughs> it looks so terrible. Oh my god. But we have to keep this, right? We have to do it this way now. This is just the way that we have to do things. Uh, and for the scan lines, transparent animated white bar moving at random intervals. Transparent animated white bar moving at 
random intervals. Um, I need to see the scan lines. Oh yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about. Like it just uh, moves down. It like moves sort of down the thing. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, this is the pixel. Uh, oops, pixelated. Yeah, we can just get rid of the canvas. Uh, it's how do we, okay, so let me think about this. We probably just want to create like solid black bars at the side, is that right? Yeah, okay, now we can actually see the, the screen. Um, and let's increase the size of this ever so slightly. So it's just slightly larger than the camera frame. All right, so yeah, that's how to do pixelation on a budget. Uh, this is probably, I mean, it's less performant than the actual shader, but like, I think it's more amusing. Um, so okay, I got to think about how to actually, easiest way to animate this stuff, and also how to show it. Um, probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, we need to go into GIMP. We need like a white square. Uh, actually, can we just create a sprite in Unity that's a square? Does Unity allow us to do such complicated things yet? Oh geez, I think it did. Okay, never mind. Unity lets us do uh, good things. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to edit this. I guess like that, okay. So we can just have a square. Yep. Need to go to GIMP last because paint.net. But yeah. <laughs> I think paint.net is like, um, I don't know, I was going to say, I think paint.net is like, I think it would work. I think it's roughly the same, right? So that's a bit too much. How thin will that go? Uh, that's too thin. Say point 0.1, uh, point, point oh 0.01. Can we get any kind of rendering? No. The problem is, is that I think the scan lines won't end up any any thinner than that. I think yeah, because that's one pixel. Anything thinner than this, it won't pick up. So the scan lines will have to be like super thick. Yeah, unfortunately, they have to be like super thick. Uh, I think we can set these to like 200 or maybe like 100. And it'll be like kind of like that. Yeah. And so these just kind of like move down. Do they move down at like a constant speed? I actually don't know. I actually don't remember how, I don't know how scan lines work. Um. Whoa, uh, don't do that, uh-oh. Please open, no, don't open there. All right, uh, let me look at, uh, let's say scan lines. Let's see. I'm actually looking constant, pretty slow speed. Um, 3D scan lines effects, so like that? Is it closer to, like are there a bunch of them or is it just one? Oh, like that. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of effect you'd be going for. Um, Old video game scan lines. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know too much about what they're supposed to look like because it's just been forever. Like, I don't know if there's supposed to be a ton of them or if there's just only supposed to be one or two at a time. Yeah, if you can find a video showing the effect, I'll try to recreate it. Yeah. 
Uh, I think even though that's not showing everything, so, uh, I don't want that showing. Go away. Yeah, I kind of like that. I actually want to see what the font looks like. Well, actually, oh, I don't know how we can make. I don't know we can make the font work, right? We can do. We can create a canvas. And I think the UI. I think it'll render the canvas. Uh, and all we need to do is create a UI TM Pro. Let's import the essentials. Uh, that's fine. I don't care about any of that. Uh, this will just be the score. And this will be at 999. And we can uh, bold, uh, enabled, center, center. And then we can lock this to the top of the screen uh, as such. And let's put this at zero, or let's put this at one, and then we'll say at minus 10. And set the width and the height to zero. Say, I don't know, minus 50. And I don't know, the score can be 70. And then let's take the Metal Lord font here. Uh, why is it not? Huh. It's not allowing. Uh, so, and then a curvature effect, make it look like one of the, some old CRT. Yeah, if you could get a, um, a picture or like a video showing the scanline effect, I'll try to recreate it. But I actually don't remember what it looks like. Also, uh, I don't know how to work with materials here in, I don't know how to add different fonts to this. This is not a TMP font. Is there any way TMP font from you? So will you now let me do this? You will. Oh, wow, that uh, that is rough. Um, that's quite rough. Uh, you should only be rendering that. You should be rendering the UI, but I don't know why you're not pixelating it. Why is it not pixelating it? Conveniently enough, I have CRT. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be cool if you could just record uh, some basic scan lines. Because yeah, I'd, I'd like to recreate it, but I don't know what the actual... I don't know what it looks like. FNAF main menu. Ah, okay. FNAF main menu. All right. I am concerned about why... So I will look at the FNAF main menu in a little bit, but I am concerned about why this or which camera is rendering so you're rendering that but you're not why are you rendering the UI you should not be rendering the UI but you are you should be rendering the UI but you're not why this is on the UI layer. That's on the UI layer. Huh. I am confused as to why it's doing that. Like, am I crazy? Is that not how that works? Do I not want you rendering the UI? Do I want you rendering the UI? No. I definitely don't want you rendering the UI. And I want you rendering the UI. Hmm. This is screen space. So is it screen space camera and then it only goes into that camera? Um, aha! Got it. Google has joined the chat. All right. Uh, so unfortunately, that score is a bit large. Just a little bit. Um, let's say font size 20 and then minus 10. Minus, minus 10. Yes, there we go. All right. That is very hard to see, but uh, you know, is what it is. All right. Uh, let's see, let's make it not bold. Um, let's set the character spacing to be maybe like eight. 
or something, and then we'll just set the font size to maybe 16. So I think Asteroids has like four or five places there. So yeah, I think that's roughly correct. All right. So for game jams, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make like older style stuff just in call the graphics like stylistic. But yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, what I prefer to do is I prefer the resolution or the, I prefer the actual width and height to be a little bit higher just to fill out the screen just for like a modern sort of size. Uh, but I'm going to take like a five minute break because I need to get some water. And let me think about what we can do in the next, I don't know, 40 minutes. But yeah, I'll be back in like five minutes.
All right, and I am back. Okay, and I'm also invisible. Wow, oh, it's amazing. Uh, I wish I could have this power whenever I wanted it. Uh, but anyway, okay, there we go. It's back. All right. Uh, so, laughs in Quick Team Fusion. Okay, now I'm invisible again because of course I am. Uh, now I'm not. Right. All right. Laughs in Quick Team Fusion. Uh, counter uh, which works like a text object. You can specify how many spaces you want to have constantly or want to constantly have. Well, that's neat. Uh, so you can do something similar to that in, let's say, C Sharp. Uh, you can say that you want to format a piece of text a certain way. And we'll probably do that for the counter. But yeah, um, I think that's fine. What we need to do is now uh, we need to get the like teleporting aspect of this working so you like whenever you tell whenever you go past a certain point you teleport to the other side of the screen so that's actually not super hard to do okay that's very interesting how that gets rendered out um i think we're getting i think it's trying to render from the the render material to the camera it's like really weird Really derpy how that works. Uh, anyway, so whenever we get to about, uh, let's say, I think it's six point, so we get to about seven, we'd want to move? No. Uh, so, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, let's say, so whenever we get past, I don't know, five point, so uh, whenever we get past five, we want to. I'm trying to think of how to store this. Uh, I think we can store it as a vector two on the player. So we go here and we set this to hmm. there's a couple ways to do this, but we'll use a vector two for now. So say protected uh, vector two. Uh, this will be the dimensions or the map map. Uh, say dimensions. And so what this will do is this will be like the, mm, I'm trying to think. If we get, uh, all right, let me think about this. Uh, so first off, what I want to do is I want to say protected uh, void handle input. Uh, I want to move all of this into a, a function just so that we can get it out of the main uh, update loop here, and we'll just put it at handle input, handle input, and then what we will do is we'll say if our transform dot position uh, dot, hmm. no, we don't need an if statement for this, uh, what we need as we need to say transform.position uh, is equal to, and then we'll say a new vector three. And this will be um, transform.position.x. If it is, huh, well, actually, no, we don't want that. Trying to think. Uh, so we want to say that this is. Err. All right, we'll do it the simple way. Uh, if transform.position.x is greater than uh, dimensions.x, then we will say uh, transform. Well, create a new, let's say, float an uh, x value. Let's say the x here is equal to transform.position.x. Uh, elsewise, the x is equal to uh, minus minus uh, dimensions dot x, uh, and we'll say if transform dot position dot x is, or we'll say else, because otherwise we might get some issues. Say else if it's less than uh, dimensions dot x minus dimensions dot x. So this will be the negative value. Uh, then the x is equal to uh, dimensions dot x 
And then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing for the y. So basically the dimensions is just the x and the y value, like the max x and y that we can be at. So if our position is greater than dimensions.x or if our, or sorry, uh, dimensions.y, or if it's less than the negative version, then we will set y to be the versions there. All right, and so what this will do this is a transform dot position equals new uh, vector three uh, x y and then uh, transform dot position dot c. So this will handle the teleporting thing. So if we go off the screen in one direction, uh, we will warp back around to the other side. Hopefully, I think that's how that'll work. Uh, it won't be perfect, but it will be at least a start. So the actual dimensions should be, I think, five and six point something. So it should be five and I think like six point seven. Uh, let's set you. Let's say five and six point seven. Now, if we go off the screen this way, should end up at the bottom of the screen that way. Yeah. All right, a little imperfect. Oh, that's not quite right. Hmm. Why is that not working? So that would be 6. Point, did I type that wrong? No, 6.7, that's right. Uh, y, all right, x, y, yes. Position is greater than dimensions dot y. It's less than that, so why is that being an issue? All of that's correct. Why is that being an issue? It's going to minus five. Uh, oh, because I have these set up wrong. Or wait, do I? Uh, uh, yes, I do. It's a six point seven. And uh, this needs to be at five. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay. See, so, yeah, now this will look a little bit better. Yeah, it does teleport, but yeah, okay. So I do want to increase or decrease the or increase the width of that. So maybe six point nine and five point two. That way it looks like a little bit of a smoother transition. Move up. Uh, I think you still get sort of the teleporty effect. Yeah, you do get kind of teleporty effect. All right. Uh, 5.3 and 7, maybe? All right. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. All right. Yeah, I think this is how the original worked, if I remember right. Maybe I remember wrong, though. I don't know. Yeah, I thought the original, like, you didn't teleport exactly where you thought you were going to go. You teleported kind of, like, teleported like this. I think this is how that worked. Might be wrong. Yeah. Kind of like it. Yeah, this took, I don't know, we got off on a little bit of a tangent, so, yeah. Mm. I think I do want this to be the right um, dimension, though. So I kind of want this to be uh, 619, uh, at, or sorry, 19, or no, 169, that's what it is. Wherever that might be, roughly, yeah. I do want to see where it is. Yeah, all right. Kind of want it like that, just that it's a little bit large. All right. Then the actual render texture itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to, I think it's 630 by 360. I think it's 916, roughly. Or 16.9. Yeah, okay, I like that a little bit more. 
And then I think, yeah, we're going to do some teleporting, so we do need to recalculate the... need to recalculate some stuff. Yeah, we can get rid of the pixelated thing here. All right. So we probably want to do the teleport when the player's right there, so minus 8.9. 8.9 and then positive 5.2. 5.3 is probably good actually. So say 8.9. All right. Yeah, we should be able to just warp across the screen now. Yeah, there we go. All right. Kind of like that. Now it works vertically as well. Yeah, it works vertically as well. All right. Cool. So now we can actually get, uh, you know, the main mechanics of the game done. That would be nice. Let's so have this render texture. We have this square that can go into images. Yeah. Okay. So now let me think about the actual. So for the shooting, all we need to do is we need to just instantiate some game object. So let me grab an images. Oh, frames were dropping for a second there. That's not good. Uh, so we'll have effects and we'll have a build circle. So this will be the bullet. It'll be much tinier than that, obviously. Uh, so let's go to the player ship and the actual bullet itself. Whoops. The bullet. Whoops. This will be the bullet. And the bullets will be super tiny, probably about like that. And then I think it'll have a little trail behind it. Smaller little bullet thing, yeah, like that. All right, so we'll create a parent. And then we will have the parent be right there at size 111. We'll have you two be there. And this will be the uh, graphics. I'm sure we'll have that there because why wouldn't we? Oh, whoops. Have you be the parent? Yeah. Rotation is fine. Okay, perfect. And you need to be at zero, zero. And you need to be like right there. All right. At zero, zero, zero. Yeah, okay. So if we rotate this, what do we get? That's fine. All right, cool. Uh, this will be the bullet. And we need to create a folder called prefabs for you. Prefabs. Let's put you in there. And we can now delete this. All right. So the bullet itself, uh, it'll be at 000 and wherever that might have gone. And it'll have a rigid body. Uh, rigid body 2D is what I mean to say. And that will have no drag. Uh, it will have uh, no gravity. And yeah, everything else on it is probably fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is in the player uh, script, we're going to have a reference to that bullet. So we're going to have a protected uh, game object. And this will be the bullet prefab, be a serialized field. And then we'll have a handle attack method or handle fire. So what we will do is we will instantiate the bullet. So we will call instantiate on the bullet prefab. We'll say transform.position, and then we'll say transform.rotation. So it'll be, rota it'll be rotated forward. This will be the game object. This will be the bullet equal to that. And so then we'll say bullet.getComponent.rigid, which is rigidbody2d. And we'll say that the velocity of the rigidbody is equal to a new vector3. Or we'll say, actually, we'll say transform dot forward, uh, and then we'll say times, I don't know, three. That should be fine. And then what we'll say is we'll say uh, destroy, and then we will destroy the bullet after, let's say, um, I don't know, five seconds. That's too long. We'll say three seconds. So yeah, this should fire some bullets for us, and then we'll have handle fire that. 
I guess what we'll do is we'll say uh, if input dot get mouse button down. Say you have to left click to fire, that's probably fine. Yeah. So let's go into scenes, uh, we'll go to the player ship, and then we'll set the bullet into here. Was that really? Okay, that's fine. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, interesting. I don't know why those don't have their velocity being set. Hmm. Why is that? Velocity equals transform times dot forward times three. That's correct. Ah, it's not transform dot forward, it's transform dot up. That's the problem. Because transform dot forward faces away from the camera, but transform dot up faces up, you know, above the player. Ah, okay, there we go. I like that. Oh boy, <laughs> this is very difficult. All right. All right, that's kind of interesting. The bullets do need to move a little bit faster, though. Maybe like times six. <laughs> Let's see. I think, yeah, I think that's closer to the asteroid bullet speed. All right. And we don't want the bullets teleporting, because uh, that would just be, I mean, it would be okay for them to teleport, but I just don't want to worry about it. Yeah, I kind of like that. I mean, I would prefer if we had like a fire rate, like a set fire rate. Yeah, I kind of think this is neat. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to have some asteroids moving around. So let's mess with that. All right, so to have an asteroid, uh, we need a couple things. Uh, first thing is hey, we're going to need to actually, you know, have it instantiated into the world. Let's grab one of these asteroids. Let's say an octagon. Yeah, that'll work. And is that approximately the right size? I think that needs to be a little bit larger. Something like that. That's probably about the right size. So let's say this is an asteroid. And let's create an empty parent and actually give this the name asteroid. This will be called graphics. So this asteroid is also going to need a rigid body 2D. It's going to have a gravity scale of zero and it'll have no drag at all. And so what we want to do is we want this to teleport the same way the player teleports, but we also want it to take damage from the bullets. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make it teleport the same way that the player teleports and we'll make it um, yeah, the first thing is we'll make it teleport the same way the player teleports. So what we want to do for that is we want an asteroid component. Uh, yeah, in scripts. We'll have an asteroid component. And then I'm actually going to make another component, and it's going to be a, call it, actually we'll make two more. We'll make a teleporting component. I think it's teleporting, let's say wrapping actually, or what's the word, whenever you kind of warp around, I don't know, teleporting component, teleport at edge component, yeah, at edge component, and then also I'm going to create a game manager component, all right, and what the game manager will do is the game manager will actually store the map dimensions. And so, okay, we're going to do a couple things. First thing is we're going to take this and we're going to move it into its own method. So we're going to say protected void uh, teleport at edge. So we're going to grab that. We're going to move it here. And then we're going to say teleport at edge right here. 
And what the game manager is going to manage is the game. <laughs> yeah, it's going to manage the game. Well, it, it will at some point. Also, why are you a ghost? Oh, yeah, I am a ghost. It's because my camera... My camera can't decide what it wants to do. I mean, I don't go outside, so I could probably just be confused with Casper most of the time. But yeah, it's because the lighting... I don't know, my camera's weird, like it'll auto-adjust, like if I put my hand in, in front of it, you can see it auto-adjusts the lighting, and so that will cause, yeah, various things to happen. Uh, anyway, we're going to then take this teleport at edge, and we're going to move that into the teleport at edge component, which I think just works. Uh, it almost works. Kind of ghost, are you a banshee, a wraith, poltergeist? Um, I, hmm, I don't know, what kind of ghost am I? What kind of ghost would I be? I don't know, that's a good question. Uh, let's make this protected void update. Um, I am virtual void. Yes, virtual void. I don't have teleport at age. I don't know. I guess... I guess I would just be well. What are, what kind of ghost is Casper? Is he just like a random? Is he just a ghost? I think that's what I'd end up being. Probably have more in common with Casper than any other ghost. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this inherit from the teleported edge component, and then we'll have a protected override. And then we'll override the update function. And so we'll call base.update and then after base.update, which we'll call the teleport at edge, we will then call uh, all the other stuff that we need. So this is one of the few, I don't know, isn't in, isn't in Phasmophobia. Oh yeah, Phasmophobia. That's a game that I haven't played that I really should. Uh, I've, I've heard of other people playing it, but it, it seems like it's a little bit too much for me. I don't know, I tend to be really uh, easily scared. Let's say we're going to create a game manager component and this will be the instance. And so in this case, yeah, we'll just have the instance and then it'll be a public get but a protected set. And then this needs to be static and then we'll have private void awake. I've written this code so much time, so many times. <laughs> I'll say if instance, uh, if instance, then we want to uh, game up, we want to destroy ourselves, object, uh, game object, and then we return. Uh, otherwise, we say instance equals this. Okay, we have that. And then what we'll have is we'll have a public uh, vector2. This will be the dimensions. No, not public. We'll have a protect. No, actually. This needs to be a public vector to, um, yeah, dimensions. Because we do need to reference it from other places. So we'll have that. And then what we'll do, <laughs> destroy ourselves, ah, yes. Uh, yeah, some of, the, some of the verbiage is kind of funny. Uh, dot dimensions. All right, so we'll make this a global reference. So that way we don't have to assign it in every single script. All right, so we'll do that, and you'll teleport at the edge, that's good. And then in the asteroid component, we'll have the teleport at edge. And right, and we'll have a protected uh, rigid body 2D uh, rigid body, and then we will grab this, lapse and destroy child. Yeah, or kill child with fork. It's always a fun one. Uh, I'll say rigid body uh, equals, oh, not rigid body 2D, just rigid body. Say that is equal to get component, and then we'll say rigid body 2D. Then we'll say rigid body uh, dot velocity equals um, transform dot forward uh, times quaternion Euler. Uh, let's say quaternion dot Euler. Euler zero zero uh, random range zero 
0 to 360. I don't know if random dot rotation is random rotation is the thing. And it actually it's quaternion uh, times uh, times transform dot forward, I think. Right? Yeah, okay. So what you can do is you can multiply a rotation by a vector and you'll get a vector rotated by that direction. Which is kind of cool. Uh, and then we want to multiply this by, uh, actually that's fine. Um, so yeah, this should be fine. Uh, it's not transformed out forward, damn it, it's transformed out up. I always do this wrong. Okay, so we'll do that. And that'll just set the initial velocity to be random, and then we'll do an override at the update method. And then we'll just call base.update. Uh, actually, we don't even need to override that then. So yeah, this should cause the asteroids to warp around if we did if we've done this correctly. So I think we need to create a first off we need to add an asteroid component. And then we need to create a game manager. I know I'm moving really quick, but that's because uh, it is almost time to wrap up the stream. Uh, and I want to make sure that it is done on time. Uh, so I think this was 8.7. Or no, it was 8.9, and I think this was 5.2, 8.9 and 5.2, right? And let's get a couple of those kicking around as such. Okay, let's see what we, do. Let's see what we get. All right, so they are moving, that's good. They did teleport a little bit, but uh, they do have the kind of problem where they don't really have, they don't, they warp instead of, um, being like super, I don't know. They don't go off the screen completely before they teleport. That's what my brain is trying to say. Uh, but anyway, I think that's a good start because we do have everything that teleports. We have a generic way to make things teleport. Uh, the bullets don't teleport, which I'm happy with actually. I think that's a good thing. Uh, we'll just make it, that's like a mechanic that they just go to the edge of the screen and that's it. Like I know that in the original, they, the bullets actually do, they warp across the screen. But I think it's a better I think it's better to have them just like vanish at the edge so that they don't vanish like in view, if that makes any sense. Yeah, of course we don't we don't collide with the asteroids at all. We need to fix that next time, but you know, we need to save some stuff for tomorrow. And I also have some ideas for adding like particle effects and stuff like that. Uh, we can make them a different color though. I do want the asteroids to have some level of color. Uh, actually, uh, that's in graphics, right? Also, why are there two copies of graphics in here? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, let's... Oh, interesting. Right, all right, let's make one of these a prefab. So this is the asteroid. Graphics are fine there, all right. So prefab in here, there we go. Now, let's see, if we, what kind of color can we give you? Can we give you like a reddish color, like a, that kind of color? No, kind of like a brown. Should be like more neon or saturated, or like less saturated. More neon? More neon. Yeah, all right. Do something like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. Gives a little bit more, a little bit more life. Maybe the background doesn't need to be so dark either. It can be a little bit lighter. How's that worked out? All right, I kind of like that. But yeah, we're gonna add like particle effects and all sorts of cool stuff and. Yeah, uh, I think it's working. Nah, nah. Uh, keep it, keep this black and white. I mean, the black and white, yeah, I don't know. My opinion with the black and white is that it's too, it's too monotone. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I guess you could. I could make it like super dark. I mean, hmm. 
Let's see. Maybe an off white at the very least. I mean, we could do something like that. Like keep it really dark and like just have an off white there. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm not completely sold on it, but maybe. I think the asteroid's gray. That might work. We at least have some color, right? Uh, maybe gray with like a bluish tint. Something like that. It's not like super, that might be too much blue, but uh, I don't know. It's, I can't tell if that's a good color. That might be maybe a little bit of lighter gray. Let me copy that just in case. It's like, I don't know, can we make it a darker gray? Maybe just a solid gray? Uh, maybe a little bit lighter. Something like that. Yeah, okay, I kind of like that. So it's a little bit better. A little bit better than just black and white. Yeah, I don't know. Next time we'll have to make it so that we actually die whenever we uh, hit the asteroids and so that our bullets actually kill the asteroids. But yeah, I think we're going to add a bunch of particle effects too, just because I think that'll make it look nice. But anyway, yeah, I'm kind of happy with that for a day's work. Anyway, uh, it is... Uh, Time to end the stream. Uh, I've been going for about two hours. My brain is kind of melted. We've made more progress, or made more progress than I thought we were going to. Uh, and also, it looks kind of nice. So thanks for the, su the suggestion to make it look kind of older, um, presented guy. Because I kind of like the way that it ended, that it turned out. Like the, I don't know. Even though the pixelation is like a very low, you know, very low budget pixelation, I think it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I'll see ya. Uh, I'll be back in two hours to do um, some some more advanced game dev stuff and after that I'm gonna make a video I'll make a video on how I did the Java stuff with no semicolons and then hmm, wait and then I'm going to um, I'm gonna do some research and see if you can actually make a game in unity raid Vulcan storm what is Vulcan storm or who is Vulcan storm let me check. Do, do, do. What do you do, Vulcan Storm? Oh, you do League. Um, doing League. Uh, is he really? It shows that he's doing League of Legends. But, okay, I'll trust you. Alright, uh, let me actually figure out how to do that. I've done it before, but I don't remember. Um, do I need to be in... I think I need to be in Twitch to do this. In the dashboard, right? I think I do. Uh, it's not there. Uh, content... Uh, now, how do I do that, really? It's in Stream Manager, right? Am I wrong? I'm going to send you the link on Daisy. Uh, is it... Oh, Raid Channel. There we go. Oh, Vulcan Storm with Science and Tech. Okay, I see. I see now, because Vulcan Storm... The... Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it now. All right, prepare to be rated. Did that work? Or am I not? Oh, raid, yes, raid. Hmm, I'm uncertain if that actually worked. I'm going to stop streaming. I think that's fine. I don't know how it works. I hope this works. <laughs>